السلام علیکم مائی ڈیئر لرنرس دس از محمد رمضان اینڈ ویلکم ٹو مائی یوٹیوب چینل ٹریننگ فار آل اینڈ ٹوڈے وی آر گوئنگ ٹو ڈسکس انادر ٹاپک آف فایوش مینیجنگ سیفٹی دیٹ از دا رسک اسسمنٹ یو نو ان ایوری ایگزام آف ہیلتھ اینڈ سیفٹی لائک اف یو گو فار ایوش نیووش آر اوشا یو ہیو ٹو کیری اوور دا رسک اسسمنٹ آف سم Uh, working areas are some organization and you have to identify the hazards and accordingly you have to take the control measures. My dear learners, we have discussed this risk assessment in module 2 of IOSH Managing Safely, uh, which is lecture number 1. You can watch this video uh, on my YouTube channel in detail. After going through that vi uh, video, you would be able to know what is the risk assessment, how to carry out the risk assessment. Even I have seen many people, they claim that we are carrying out the risk assessment, but still in spite of carrying out the risk assessment, number of accidents are happening in that organization. So it means uh, that you can say that the risk assessment which we are carrying out that is not uh, accurate or the person who is carrying out the risk assessment, he is not competent. So uh, here we will discuss uh, about the risk assessment. Uh, here you will write the name of the assessor. For example, your name is, I name, my name is Muhammad Ramzan. And the date uh, on which we are carry, uh, carrying out the risk assessment, that is 23rd April 2024. The time is about 10 a.m. in the morning. Working area is your welding and cutting area and task being assessed. Mean during the risk assessment, which task was in progress, which we assessed basically. So you can say here that uh, the CNC 5-axis machine uh, was in operation during my risk assessment. Now these are the columns which we have to uh, fill up. The first and the most important column is that is to write down the hazard. Hazard, we have discussed anything that has the potential to cause harm, that is a hazard and there are different types of the hazard. For example, there is a naked wire, there is a unguarded machine, there is the slippery surface or there is the falling hazard or you can say there is the fumes or gases. These are the different types of the hazard. And one thing more which is very important that it does not mean that hazards are available only in construction company, only in oil and gas sector or textile sector. Even these hazards can be at our home as well. So even uh, we are, when we are conducting or carrying out the risk assessment, we can also carry out the risk assessment of our home, of our hostel, where we are living, where we are working. So the purpose is to promote your awareness that how you will work as a safety manager, as a safety engineer in the organization, how you will identify the hazard and how you will take the control measures on those hazards. So uh, in first column, what is the hazard basically? Ha what is the hazard mean? What you have seen during your risk assessment. For example, in this case, uh, during the risk assessment, it was observed that welding was in progress on site, but that was not properly covered. Welding was there. But you can say that that area was not properly covered. So there is the risk of fire with that flammable material. So it means your first column is OK. Now you will switch over to second column. In second column uh, here, uh, there is a one question. Who might be harmed? Mean uh, you have identified the fire hazard. But the question is that how uh, who might be harmed with this, this has who might be affected you can say uh, welding workers supervisors engineers uh, they can be at a high risk of the fire hazard how might the people be harmed ultimately uh, this fire hazard can uh, lead to the uh, severe damages to the equipment or other property or even it may lead to the personal injury burn or even death of the personal as well so you can say that these are the effects are these can be the consequences of that fire hazard after completion of column number three uh, now you will switch over to column number four and in column number four there is a one question that what we have already seen that what actions has already been taken in that organization for example if you if we talk about the fire now you have to mention here that what actions has already been taken to control site type of the fire hazard. For example, you have seen in the organization that toolbox talk was 
regularly arranged before the job. Toolbox, toolbox talk was conducted on a regularly basis. This is a good sign and this action was already being taken. Then the second action which you can see here that the availability of the fire watcher was uh, there to ensure supervision was provided in the activity area. Supervision was there. Fire center was also there. Provision of fire center near welding plant was there. So these are the actions which has already been taken. Now you have to assess that either the action which has already been taken, what do you think either those actions are suitable, those actions are sufficient. After taking those actions, what is the level of the risk? For example, if I am rating, I am using the rating scale from 1 to 5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And if I will see first L mean likelihood, what is the likelihood of that uh, fire hazard? So you see here that there is the high likelihood of that fire hazard. So it means you will uh, give the rating about four, four likelihood. And the second aspect is that is the consequences. Consequences mean and now you have to uh, see that if it will happen, what will be the result? What will be the outcome of this hazard? So you uh, see here that that is the five because it can lead to the death of the personal. It can lead to the personal uh, injury. So I am giving uh, here as a five rating scale. So we know that there is the formula of risk assessment to calculate the risk. That risk is always equal to likelihood multiplied by the consequences. So when we will multiply likelihood multiplied by consequences, so four fives are 20. So uh, 20 mean it falls in the major category. This is the major. It means the action which has already been taken, uh, these are not sufficient. Still, in spite of all these actions, still there is the high risk level of fire in the working area. Now, my dear learner, this is the time that you have to suggest some control measures. You have to give some recommendation that what is what are your suggestions that how we can control these hazards efficiently and effectively mean basically here you have to suggest additional control measures so what can be your additional control measures in this case for example you are recommending that arrange an aluminium cable to avoid its fumes going outside so you you are suggesting here that there should be a separate cable for the uh, welding job uh, just to avoid from the fumes your second suggestion or recommendation or uh, additional control is the relocation of argon gas cylinder and you are ensuring that the person who is conducting of the risk assessment, he must be in the possession of permit to work. That is called PTWO. He must be in possession of permit to work. So permit to work, you know, that is the uh, formal document which is provided to the workers. That permit to work will ensure that the worker is competent. Worker is having the knowledge that how to carry out the welding. Basically, in permit to work, we try to ensure three areas, three main areas. First one is that worker has the knowledge how to carry out the welding, how to carry out the task. Okay, he proves that I have the knowledge about the welding. Then the second aspect is that either he has the knowledge about the associated hazard during the welding process. What can be the possible hazard during this process? Okay, he has the knowledge about the hazard. The third aspect is that either he has the knowledge about the precaution measures. What precaution measures needs to be taken before start of welding? during the welding and after the welding. If that individual will prove that I have the knowledge about the job, I have the, the knowledge about the hazard, and I have the knowledge about the precaution measures, then safety department will issue the permit to work to the individual. So this is called the permit to work and you are uh, giving some, uh, this is the additional control which you think that it must be introduced to reduce the risk of the fire hazard. Now at the fourth stage, uh, you have to, uh, you are suggesting that conduct a regular risk assessment on heart hazard. I mean, they, when there is a uh, welding work, when there is a heart work, a safety officer has to carry out the regular risk assessment. You can say before start up every task, uh, every welding job, safety officer will carry out the risk assessment. Right? So my dear learners, after giving your additional control measures, Again, you have to assess the level of the risk that what, what you think that after taking these control measures, what will be the level of the likelihood and what will be the level of the consequences? You think that after taking these control measures, 
your uh, likelihood will be about two and your consequences will be about, uh, you can say, three. So when we will multiply likelihood multiplied by consequences, so your risk level is equal to six. So you can see here that there is the big difference that after taking the additional control measures, your risk level, which is reduced from 20 to six rating levels. No, you can, uh, you will see in your criteria, either this is the uh, acceptable risk or this is again unacceptable risk. So my dear learners, in some cases, when who take the control measures, it may possible that your risk has been uh, permanently eliminated, but in some cases uh, that will be reduced. And after uh, reducing the risk, again, you will see either this is an acceptable limit or not. So uh, you will suggest uh, that after taking my additional control measure, your risk level will be about six. And that is according to the OSHA standard, according to the health and safety compliance, uh, this is about the uh, low risk level, which you can say uh, that this is the acceptable risk. My dear listeners, in some cases, when who take the control measures, after taking control measures, there will be some risk. And in safety language, that risk is called the residual risk. So in this case, uh, after taking the additional control measure, this is the uh, residual risk. And in this case, this is also the residual risk. After taking these control measures, this is the level of the risk. This is called the residual risk. Now you have to determine, you have to confirm from the standard either the residual risk is acceptable or it is unacceptable. If it is in the range, that would be acceptable. If it is out of the range, that would be unacceptable. So you can see here, in this case, 20 rating scale is unacceptable. But in this case, the rating level is 6. So you can see here that this is the acceptable level of the risk. Now, after uh, doing all these control measures and action, now you have to determine that the action which you have suggested who will be responsible uh, uh, taking these actions? Either these are the responsibilities of finance manager, safety manager, safety supervisor, HR manager. So uh, according to your action, sometime uh, your action will, some action will be taken by the safety manager, some action will be taken by the uh, manager, and so, some action will be taken by the HR managers. But again, in this case, you can see here that all these actions are related to the safety department. So I am uh, giving the responsibility to safety manager, HSE manager is responsible to take all these up, uh, all these control measures or all these uh, the uh, additional controls. Now you have to write down the uh, date here uh, that uh, on which date it will be monitored that either the risk has been properly controlled, has been properly managed or not. So my dear learners, uh, this is all about the uh, risk assessment of IOSH managing safely. Almost same pattern is followed in NEBOSH IGC also. So the purpose to discuss uh, this uh, IOSH managing safely risk assessment is to uh, uh, aware you, is to educate you that how you will carry out the risk assessment of your working areas. My dear learner, in most of the organization, uh, this would be the most important job of the safety officer to carry out the risk assessment on frequently basis. In some cases, uh, this risk assessment will be carried out after uh, after some interval, if that is the static based organization. But in some cases, this uh, risk assessment will be conducted before start of every job. So uh, in IOS, we have to identify some hazards. And I have told you there are different types of the hazard. Then again, you will write the review date that what will be the review date mean uh, how we will see that either after taking all these additional control measures either the uh, accident has been controlled uh, safety level which we have which we have determined uh, safety target which we have determined that has been achieved or not so this will be the review date you can say my review date will be can be after uh, six months so uh, i'm writing here that your uh, review date is about uh, 28 about uh, so this is, can be the review date and after that uh, you will uh, put your signature here uh, your ultimately the individual who is carrying out the risk assessment he will carry out the sign or he will put his sign here so my dear learner this is all about the uh, risk assessment of ios managing safely i hope you got the better understanding how to carry out the risk assessment 
so uh, this is all about today so again uh, at the end of session i am uh, requesting and suggesting please subscribe my channel uh, ultimately that would be a motivation for me and the benefit which you can get after subscribing that you can get the uh, latest and updated videos of health and safety about different aspect uh, uh, once you will subscribe ultimately you will become part of my channel okay wish you best of luck allah